What's up, everyone? It's Mike Bendy from Fredera Guitars. I'm here with my newest inspiration, Mr. Ryan Martini. Pleasure to see you. Yeah, pleasure. Man, after <laughs> just hearing you play <laughs> over in Joey's room, uh, that was fucking awesome. I, I felt you, I, I heard you, and ex like our conversations we were having before, and I really appreciate it. So thank you for the inspiration. That was amazing. Like I, I felt you coming through this instrument. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, it helps to have a wonderful instrument to play, actually. So, um, you know, I'm finally getting my hands uh, uh, really used to this blondie here. And um, so it's great to hear someone like yourself who actually <clears throat> plays bass beautifully uh, instead of nastily. <laughs> uh, um, You're too kind. Uh, uh, say nice things. Um, but it helps, obviously, to have something to start off with that is so expressive. Um, but I've found that working with this bass in particular, it just has some um, different harmonic, uh, melodic uh, underpinnings to it, just from the woods, the choices, uh, the build quality through and through. But uh, yeah, I'm able to say what I need to say now um, with this. And it took some time to, to, to wrap my head around that, obviously, um, you know, playing the same instruments for 20 plus years. Right. Uh, and, and then um, <clears throat> making a major change in the shape of the body and and uh, wood selections and um, kind of through and through. Um, but now I feel cozy uh, and able to get what I need to come out to, right. to, to say uh, the right thing for the song, at least if, and, and hopefully um, say what I have to say in there too. You know, let the song speak and um, let the bass be heard and um, help the song, help support the other musician, musicians and, and if I can, help show them off. Yes. You know, if I can do that thing, that's the good musical sleight of hand. If I can be a good fundamental bass player while being, you know, maybe somewhat uh, trying to be outside of the box um, or reaching for that anyway, um, you know, while also making everyone else shine is, is where I'm at, you know, trying. And this bass certainly helps. So, uh, and it helps to have wonderful players like you say nice things uh, that are encouraging. It's um, like so similar, like, cause you have the two pickups here. I play with the ramp, the piece of wood in between the two pickups. Yeah, yeah. I was like, that's the same kind of sh I'm, I've been doing. Where, why haven't I been listening to you more and more? Cause I've heard you in your bands. Mm but I never really studied you. And I have one question for you. Do you give lessons? <laughs> <laughs> I need to learn some of that. Um, it's because it's similar, because you're doing the multi-finger well, technique, well, you're doing the rhythmic. Well, the first the first lesson, for for ding. Yes, That's okay. Lesson number one. No, that. <laughs> I have actually uh, in the past, but I would say it's more about um, trying to get someone started on the right sure. foot. I'm not a great uh, teacher or instructor. Um, I've known uh, people who are. I'm not one of them. Um, uh, I'm far too up in my own head and, and interested in kind of that exploration, um, which is definitely what you need to do as a, as a new uh, 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 player, you know, new to the instrument kind of player. Um, but I would send somebody to, to uh, someone else who's really patient and has a lot to offer in the way of, you know, rote learning and, and tacit knowledge, you know, through gigging and, and through playing and through their relationships and, um, you know. Because you're self-taught, right? Yeah. Me too. That I am. Brilliant. You took it to a whole nother level with uh, you shedding on all the Jocko stuff and that you, uh, you know. Changed played. my life. Yeah, I, you know, you're here. Yeah. Uh, right? And this did change my life, too, uh, to play and teach myself these things. But I took a little different route than, than the Jocko uh, uh, route, which I don't think I became aware of his playing until um, probably high school age. Right. You know, I was Stanley Clark and, um, you know, the cats from, from that period. Um, but... 
Yeah, not Jocko until then. Um, so you had that. I don't know when you uh, heard I about was him because in, obviously he's a, such I a. I was movie. 13 years old. I was in seventh grade. Okay. Uh, we had a great bass player in high school in Warwick, Ben Wright, and phenomenal guy. Uh, he, he was like, oh, your brother plays bass? Has he ever heard of this guy, Jocko Pastorius? Like, oh, yeah, we'll give it a try. So we went to like a local music store. We were in my aunt in Long Island, went to Coconuts. And uh, my brother bought. <laughs> The uh, debut album, I bought, it was like a double tape of like Black Market, one side, Heavy Weather, the other, and that, that was it. That's but it was weird, being self-taught, I had to be self-taught. My dad, I learned uh, No More Tears. So I, I learned that song, my brother showed it to me, who plays guitar, John Bendy. So he got me the bass, but then I was like, oh dad, let's, uh, can I get a lesson? He's like, nope. <laughs> you gotta figure this out on your own, son. Uh, mm. So I was mad at him for years, God rest his soul, but now I see it was a gift to me because I had to really want it. He wanted me to really figure it out myself. Yeah, it's an interesting thing, um, the idea to teach someone art. Right. Uh, or how to make art that's almost antithetical to it, yeah. if you will. Uh, uh, and yet... Um, there are wonderful painters and potters and sculptors that, have, that of course, went to prestigious schools, and, and we're familiar with those. Um, so it's not one or the other. Right. Um, I think it's kind of what what's right for each person, and you're going to find people who are outsider artists um, who make brilliantly inspired work um, that are self-taught, <clears throat> and then you're going to find people from upper echelons that went to Ivy Leagues or you know prestigious schools <clears throat> that are also wonderful. Um, there's no right or wrong way to right. pr approach that. I think um, I'm always kind of I've been one of those people who you know uh, doesn't want to entertain the idea that that higher education can provide some of those avenues um, that it has provided for for many artists. I want to fly by the seat of my pants and yes. and figure the thing out by m on my own yes. and not really worry about what other people have done. Even though while recognizing. I'm just a composite of everything I've ever been exposed to. Right. Um, you know, um, without throwing that out and knowing it, um, but trying to f uh, train my attention on creating something that is um, not the same old thing um, that does that does its job. Still, like I said, is a good fundamental bass player and supports the band, but also you're, uh, you're a living legend. Uh, trying to reach out of the box a little bit. Um, to express some of the things that I haven't heard elsewhere. that They, they, they don't say me. They're, they don't say my band. They don't say my song. Um, you know, and try to find what that is. And that took searching. And that wasn't going to happen sitting in a classroom for me. Uh, maybe it can work for someone else that way, but it certainly wasn't um, for me. So I was the kid who was really not all that thrilled about sitting in any classroom from the time I was like this big. Needed right. to be outside, needed to be exposed to um, uh, not rote learning. I, I needed to have the nature around me and to <clears throat> really be able to uh, delve down into that. You know, I found out where water comes from by following a stream upstream to its source and having the realization as a grade school kid, water comes from the ground mm. up. Like a little burbling, it's literally burbling up out of the ground as I traced it back. So nature has been a wonderful teacher, you know. But you have to go, want to go on the journey. You have to go upstream a little bit to yeah. find where it came from. Um, and that was that plus like a loosely tied metaphor. Like I ah, like that. No. I'm very fortunate to have family that supported me to do that. I think part of it was like, well, we better support this because if we don't, he's going to end up in jail or dead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm so oh, I'm sorry. I don't mean to laugh. No, no, going no, to jail no, or dead, no, but yeah, I understand. <laughs> uh, but seriously, that's um, that, you know, uh, I think was maybe a, a small portion of the thought was you know, or we're gonna have to send him to the military, or, or you mm -hmm. know, there's gonna be what do we do with this kid that's like kind of different? And it was obvious that my interest was toward instruments, and so I uh, I spent a lot of time with it, you know, trying to figure new things out and. Trying to make sounds that I heard and had heard hadn't heard everyone else do yet. Right, you've play, been playing for a number of years. I've been playing for a number of years. How do you not fall in just to your normal like 
muscle memory licks? How do you find something new? What do you do to, ah, do you go running? Uh, do you that meditate? too, that too. Um, you know, it's. Maybe it's things we can't say on camera. <laughs> there's that, there's that maybe. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I go exploring. Yeah. I go exploring, you know, and like probably any uh, of us knows that has played for any uh, uh, bit of time, you know that sometimes you pick the thing up or you have it in front of you, whatever that instrument is, yeah. and, and and you go, okay, I'm going to reach down into the river and see what I get. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you come up empty-handed, and sometimes you come up and your bucket's full, and you don't know when that's going to happen or why. Uh, um, you can work toward that happening more often, you know, through practice and yes. um, being familiar with it. You know, they say luck happens at what the intersection of uh, opportunity and preparation. So, you know, being prepared and recognizing that moment, you know, is 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 a part of it. I think. Um, but yeah, I go exploring. I go fishing, man. I go see what happens, and I try to make mistakes. Right. Um, you can't be afraid to make mistakes. Yeah, you gotta fail up for sure with with instruments. You you know you really have to make a lot of mistakes, um, and and that may be you know contrary to what people are taught or um, you know you you have to get the grade. You want the gold star. You're supposed to perform, and you know you want to be seated in this chair in the orchestra or the jazz band or whatever it, whatever it is, and um, that doesn't that means you're second or third or fourth or fifth chair for, for making mistakes. And um, those mistakes can really lead to wonderful things in wonderful places um, if you allow them to be seen as a part of your growth instead of a mistake. Yeah. Um, and incorporate that in, you know. Um, Whoa, I played that thing totally wrong and that sounded cool. <laughs> you know, recognize that and not go, oh, that was just wrong. Whoops. You know, okay, fine. But what else is in that? You know, is there a chance for for something special or something new to come out, you know, and, and not being afraid afraid to, to say that. Right. For years, you know, I wanted to be this, I wanted to be that, how come I'm not like Victor, how come I'm not like Jacob, I'm like Matthew, this and that. But then you come to a point where you find confidence in yourself and your voice is, is as important as anyone else's voice. As long as it's your true voice, not trying Yours. to be... Mm-hmm. Yours. Yes. It's the most important thing. Yes. It is. Um, but at one of the base camps, um, you know, it was easy to see, you know, there's a bunch of really wicked bass players there. Sure. Like, there's so many. Smoking yeah. hands down, like craziest, craziest players there. And, you know, but there are only a few of them that you could hear just a few notes yeah, and like, go, that's them. Yep. That's that guy. I know who that is by those few notes, by that lick, by that thing, that's that person. I want to be that guy. Yes. I, 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 you know, there are a zillion players, you go to Nam, mm-hmm. and like every player there outplays me by bunches. Right. They're all smoking, showing off the best, coolest, clackety clackety things. I used to get so much anxiety going to Nam shows. And oh, you just man. get smoked. You get totally yeah. smoked. And then, and then <laughs> you go back and, well, who are these people? Do they do they create songs that anyone right. cares about? Um, is there anything musical about what they're doing? What's the emotional did it, content? Did it, did it say something? Yeah. Did it make me feel anything other than like, like blown out, like too many notes? Yeah. You, you know, um, <laughs> did, it, did did I did I feel something from that? Yes. Um, other than just like kind of put off. Yeah, um, like we were talking about before, the intent. What is the intent, the intent behind the notes? The intent matters. What are you trying to say? Yeah, and if you're just standing there trying to play, um, you know, like me with my dusty knees on the on the shop floor, you know, Got shop gro- pants, uh, gro- grooving down, you know, trying to figure out, you know, working on it a little bit, and um, all of a sudden there's some people in the room, and I had no idea they're there because I'm actually just doing my thing. Yes. And I'm focused on what I'm doing. Um, and it takes that, too. I think you have to be able to focus a little bit. Yeah, and I noticed I, your focus is like laser pinpoint accuracy, uh, which I love. I was like, yes. Uh, uh, I love this guy. Uh, <laughs> I have to stay focused like that or lose it. You know, I mean, there are only so many things that you can 
get out of this with these techniques and these hands and these strings and these tunings and then um, so you kind of got to train your mind on it you know a little bit and the rest of my life I look I like my stuff to be pretty loose you yes. know professionally I'm gonna be on time early and I want other people to do, do the same uh, but in my free time and kind of who I am as a person I don't have one junk, junk drawer. I have junk drawers, plural, uh -huh. you, you yeah. know, yeah. Um, and uh, and proud of, it. you know, I got other stuff to be doing that I'm still trying to keep my focus on, keep my eye on the ball and and, and make things that people are interested in um, that hopefully um, push outside of the box and uh, and say something important or, or at least say something worth hearing. For their latest signature instrument, the Ryan Martini. This is the Blondie. There's two of them. Yeah, this and is, this is things Blondie. in the works. So stay tuned, <sighs> folks. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah, this is a uh, this is Blondie. So what we got there? This is Blondie and uh, Blondie. She's a beauty. Uh, Vin Vinny made um, this, and Vinny and Dan and all the guys here um, put their hands on this, and uh, I couldn't be happier or more proud of it. Um, I'm super thrilled to have something that um, fits me. We took the body size down from a lot of bases yeah. and made this fit me. Um, so dope. I'm like 5'8 and 150 pounds soaking wet. So, um, you know, I'm not a big giant bass player with big giant hands. Now, this is a longer scale. Right. But uh, um, the body is a little bit smaller. But, of course, look at that. Nice access. Oh. The lines. Um, but uh, we created something together um, that I think sounds and looks tremendous. Um, and uh, I'm really pleased to be able to uh, share it with everyone. And, and I'm looking forward to what's next with, uh, with the stay tuned part because that's one of the reasons I'm here is to, to get down on that. So uh, stay tuned. Yes. Ryan, thank you so much for being amazing you are the man and thank you for the inspiration and coming into our lives and i never thought i'd be hanging with you and here we are in brooklyn new york at the for headquarters well thank you so much, much because love. i was talking with Vinny the first time uh, that i was here and here and I, I'm trying to focus on it's this design laying on the table, and I'm we're going through this thing with Vinny, and we're talking about all the parts. And some dude, um, some person is in the background slaying it. I'm like, yeah, and Vin, and I'm like getting distracted. I'm like, who's that person? And they're smoke, and it's this cat killing it. Like no joke, I was distracted. So thank you for being inspiring. It was inspiring enough to take my ears off of my signature uh, instrument and working with Vinnie Fodera, which is one of the lights in my life right now. So uh, I was uh, uh, not just impressed, I was just, I was taken away. That's uh, beautiful, thank you. Yeah, but no, to no give problem. not me credit, I was playing Matthew Garrison's, uh, his instrument, the, his uh, second signature instrument. So I was a little more inspired than usual. Watch out, Matt. He's coming for you. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a godfather. He's, the, he's a giant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes. Thanks for uh, checking this out. And uh, thank you, DK. And uh, We'll see you soon. Take care, everybody. We love you. Peace. It's that whole uh, old, the old joke of, uh, who plays that song? Let them. <laughs> 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 <laughs>